Hello and welcome to Back at Camp, Mojave County's only outdoor television show. I'm your host, Captain Don Martin, and on today's show we're going to feature a very special young man and his hunting and shooting accomplishments. We're going to be talking to Ryan Borden, who this year has accomplished a lot of good things while in the outdoors. So don't go away. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to Back at Camp. I'm your host, Captain Don Martin. On today's show, I got with me a very special guest. I'd like to welcome Ryan Borden back to the show. Ryan, hey, you've been on this show a couple times. We've talked about some things. Let's go back and kind of recap what you've done. I met you a couple years ago. Uh, last summer, you worked as an intern for me up there at, on Lake Mead at Striper Hunters, and uh, hopefully you learned a few things. and. Uh, you got out there and did some fishing and uh, uh, had a pretty good time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Did you learn anything? A lot. Yeah. A lot. Well, and, you know, in our business, we deal with people. It's, it's learning how to deal with people. And then towards the end of the summer, we got we got your sister involved, Laura. She come out there and, uh, you know, she hadn't done any of this. And, and she started working. She was basically, she was going to be our camp hostess. But then she got out on the water and uh, kind of give you a, a beating towards the end there. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, see. So, you know, we got another summer coming up. We're hoping to get you guys back up there and uh, get you out there fishing and, and helping our customers again. You think she's going to she's gonna get you this year? Uh, she she might. She, I, don't, I don't know. She's turning into be a pretty good stick. Yeah, she is. You know, so, you know, she's, she's doing pretty good out there. Now, besides what you did fishing last summer, you, you caught some nice fish and – in the summertime and then you know in the fall we uh we went dove hunting you did pretty good on that dove shoot that was a lot of fun yeah yeah, yeah we went out on opening day and uh now you did give her a beating on opening day shooting doves yep. yeah i mean you were smoking them and of course she never shot a shotgun before so you know she was this is pretty new to her yeah but but you you've shot a shotgun before yes what have you what have you hunted before with shotgun uh quail rabbits uh before we went uh hunted ducks once or twice never got to shoot any uh shoot, shot some doves uh, this uh, this fall we decided we were gonna we were gonna go start duck hunting again and you and and laura and i we started hitting some tanks and uh you guys actually got some birds yeah i got some birds yeah the first day we all went that was that was a great day. Yeah, I mean, Laura got a Drake Mallard, and you got a you got a couple of birds, and uh, you know it, it was a lot of fun. And subsequently, we got you in a waterfowl camp, and boy, that that waterfowl camp, you guys had a ball down there in Topak. And we got got a lot of <coughs> shots off, learned a lot about how to set decoys and how to shoot ducks, and got to shoot a little trap with it too. Right, and you you got hooked up with a couple of guys, Jim Rich and another friend of ours down there and uh, uh you guys you guys did some bird hunting and you you did pretty good yeah what'd you do on your last hunt with mr rich uh i got four snow geese well on the last day of the season the federal government and arizona government allows youngsters persons under the age of 18 to hunt and only you guys can hunt Jim Rich took you down there to Topak, and, and what happened? Uh, well, it had been raining, so so we couldn't drive in. To, so, the, to where you wanted to set set your the blind and decoys. Right. So this walk was pretty far, so we had to walk lightly w with all the stuff we had. You know, we did decoys yeah, and everything. Had out. to cut everything in half, kind of, so that way we could fit everything in the in the sled and. So when we got down there, we set everything up, and we could hear birds flying and flying. So when the sun came up, we looked all around the slough, and there's ducks everywhere. But no other hunters? No, no other hunters. You were the only junior hunter in the whole pintail slough? Yeah. Just you and Jim Rich? Yep. And you could see ducks all over the place, but there was nobody else around there to help keep them moving around? Pretty much. That, yeah, it was... So you didn't get a lot of shooting initially. Not no, not until about ten o'clock. Then then some birds started moving around. 
Right. What'd you, what'd you end up doing? Uh, well, we were working pintails, and they were coming in pretty good. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a lone snow came in into our decoys. And Jim told me, wait, 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 till he turns away. And as soon as he turned away, Jim told me to get him. I, I jumped up and shot him with one shot. You got your first snow goose. Yeah. Wow. Well, in the last, I can tell you in the last three years that I've been down there, I've got exactly one snow goose there. So, so you had me tied at that point. Yeah. So then what happened? So then we're sitting there, and I look over, and I thought there was three Drake Mallards that landed, but they're all Hollywood Mallards. Shovelers. Yeah. And so Jim said, shoot those two. And I said, I only see one that landed. Well, the arrow weed was in my face, and I couldn't see. So when they jumped up when I said that, I shot one shot and two of them. Smoked. What, what kind of gun were you using? Well, I was using a, a 12 gauge Remington 1100. And with what kind a, of what kind of barrels you have on? A skeet barrel. So you went away from the traditional shooting, you know, modified full choke stuff. Now you're using a skeet barrel, which is an open choke, but you're shooting still shot. Yeah. And you're shooting over these decoys and those those shovelers jumped up and you dumped a pair of them with one shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hard to do. Good thing you had Jim Richard as a witness, or I'm not sure how to do yeah. it. Because that's that's pretty hard yeah. to do. It's not easy to get two on the flush. So so Jim goes out and he's out there looking for them birds and what happens then? And uh they they kinda scurry off and Jim yells at me, come down the slough to come try to kill at least one of them. One of the ones you knocked down. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I start, I'm, I'm hiking on the road and I'm walking and trying to get through all this mud and, and it was hard to walk through. So I pass him and he says, get back to the blind and there's probably a thousand snows coming down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I run down the slough back to the blind and I get down there and I look down the slough and here comes all kinds of geese. Big geese. Big, the the yeah. big, large Canadas. Yeah, and there's there's snows, there's Canadas, and so Jim was on the other side of the slough, calling, 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 and here comes like seven or eight Canadas. The giant into Canadas. The, decoys. the biggest, and, uh, the biggest Canadas. Yeah. Yeah, and that, what happens? Uh, I, that they were coming down hot and heavy, and uh, they were going to land right in the decoys, and I've never experienced shooting Canadas, so. I didn't know to let him land, so I got trigger happy. I jumped up and shot it one, three times, and didn't make contact with any of them. Wow! So the so now the the Canadas they all flush off. You shot. A little, I think Jim said you were might have been a little out of range for what you were doing there. Yeah. And and you shot, and they so they turn off, and he said he could hear he could actually hear the shot hit the birds, but they're so big that it just deflected the shot. Yeah, I saw a little bit of feather coming off, but nothing nothing to... Nothing to write home about. Right. So these so these big giant Canadas, they fly off. So now you reload and you're sitting there. And then what happens? Uh, so Jim comes back and so we're just sitting there and it's getting a little warm outside. So the action starts, you know, and then all of a sudden everything dies down. So I take off my jacket. Well, my white arms are showing. So the sun's beating off of them. Mm -hmm. So Jim says, well, whenever something's coming, get up next to the fence so that way... The now you're can't. in a blind that has been previously built, right? Yes. On, on the pintail slew. Okay. Right. And so all of a sudden, I looked down the slew, just standing there talking, and I said, Jim, there's five snows coming. He goes, all right. So I get down, and he's calling and calling, and he does his quack call. And I was wondering why he did the quack call. And there's a pintail flying by, and he said, shoot the pintail. He really wanted me to get a pintail, because I already have a snow. Pintail would be great. And so he goes, all right, never mind, leave the pintail alone. So he's working these snows, and I could have shot at him four or five times already. And I was wondering why he was not letting me shoot him, because I just wanted to hear him say, get him. Right. That was kind of... Well, he's a veteran waterfowler, and right. he, knows, he, knows. he knows when the time is to take the shot. Yeah, he does. And so I, I listened to him about getting them and wait. So he says, they're in your face, get them. Well, I jump up, and I see the first biggest one out of them all. 
How many, how many geese do you have in front of you? Uh, probably seven or eight. Okay. And I shoot the first biggest one I see and, and killed him dead. You just smoke him? Yeah, right in the water and he, he dumped Now he wasn't on the water, he wasn't landed. No. He was still, he was still yeah. coming in down into the decoy. Just want to make that because we don't do water spots. No, no. No, we don't water spots. No. No, no. So, so, so this, they're coming in. They're coming in the decoys. Right. And you jump up, and that first one's right there in front of you. Yeah, and he, he wasn't really coming down to the decoys. He was kind of like still checking everything out and flying. He was going to fly, I think, over us. Right. But he was going to cut off to the, his right. Mm -hmm. So I shoot and kill him. He just full. Yeah. So Jim said, kill another one. I jump and I, boom, another one drops. Two in a row. Yeah, and I'm like, holy moly. <laughs> so he goes, kill another one. Well, I went, boom, and I saw feathers come off. And Jim said, you hit that one. Well, he flew with the flock back down towards like. Or the goose field. Yeah, there. but the opposite end. Mm -hmm. And we're watching him. He says, we're watching, watch him. And he just falls. All of a sudden. Yeah. So I said, well, okay. Hopefully, you know, he's over there not suffering. Sure. W which he didn't. He was, what he was doing is you'd, you would hit him good. In the lungs. And, and in the lungs. And he just, he just collapsed and died. He was dead when he hit the ground. Right. And yeah. so Jim, Jim and I were thinking, you know, we don't want him suffering down there. So it come, he said, well, all right, well, when we are done, they go down there and get it. Mm -hmm. So we waited probably 30 more minutes till noon and then it was time to clean up he said all right i want you to take this stuff and he goes i want you to go down there at, uh, talk to uh matt from the fish and wildlife service right and yep. see if you could go retrieve that last retrieve goose. the yeah. last goose and i said okay so I, I go down and matt says i can but then matt says well hold on you can't take a gun with you right and i it was past noon, no shooting time. Sure. So I was thinking, you know, I hope that goose is dead. And he was. So I walk over there, and there he was laying there. He was and dead. And I got a trio, so. <laughs> Good job. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to him about some of his trap shooting exploits. We already saw he done really, really good on that goose hunt, so don't go away. Let's hear how he does on his trap shooting. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Five, keep going. He keeps calling out scores. Five, five, five. And I shot my first. Welcome back to Back at Camp. I'm your host, Captain Don Martin. On today's show, I got with me Ryan Borden. Now, Ryan's a young guy that lives out in Golden Valley and has been hunting and fishing with me now for going on a couple of years. We talked about some of his fishing exploits last summer and some of his duck hunting and goose hunting exploits last fall. Now we're going to talk about his new thing that he got involved with, which is the Scholastic Clay Target Program. He joined the Mojave Bighorns. Ryan, now tell me about joining that group and, and what that group's all about. Uh, well, I joined it because I like shooting and I like shooting shotguns. Okay. And that's one of the things I like to do. So what you do is when you join, you pay $25 and for like six months or something like that, you you get to shoot 50 rounds every other Saturday and it... The animal's furnished to you? Yeah. How about the shotguns? Uh, if you don't have one. So if they actually furnish you a shotgun if you don't, if you don't have them and you get to shoot 50 rounds every other Saturday. Yeah. And it, you don't have to pay any more money for that? No. Wow. So, and it's part of the Scholastic Clay Target Program, which is a program where, number one, you have to stay academically uh, uh, where you're available to shoot because they have regulations that require that your grades be at a certain level before you're allowed to even participate. So you have to do well in school, and you're out there and you're shooting with your team, the Mojave Bighorns. Who's your coaches? Steve Bell, Dave Kaufman, uh, Gordon Klein, um, Linda Bell is our uh, safety officer. Okay. How about Greg, 
Holden. Uh, yeah, Greg Holden. He he started coming lately, more and more. How about Billy Tri uh, Privets? Uh, Billy Billy helps yeah, you guys out a little bit, doesn't he? A little bit, but he's more like him and his wife are more the office. Okay, so so you, how many people are on your team? Oh man, we got 30, 40, 30, 40 people on that team. Yeah, if and if, you got you got. Men and women on that team, boys and girls, right? Right. So, um, so you go out there. Now, what what primarily are you shooting? What are what are the shotgun sports that you guys get to shoot? Uh, we can we shoot normally just trap and skeet. Okay, trap and skeet. But you also have sporting clays available at some point, right? You guys, right. you guys get to shoot that. So, out of those three, what what do you like to shoot the best? I like to shoot trap. Oh, what happens when you shoot skeet? Uh, well, I don't do as good. Well, I, I just as a point of reference, I think him and I shot a couple of times. Yeah. We had some ski competition, and uh, what happened there? Uh, you kicked my butt. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, just so we're on the record, you heard it right here. Okay, so, so you like trap better than you like skeet. And explain to me the difference between trap and skeet. A lot of people probably don't know what it is. Well... Skeet, there's two houses involved. Okay, a high house, a low house. Right. Okay. And uh, which way do the targets go? Away from you and towards you. Okay, so the high house, the targets, and and you're in a kind of half Heads circle. To the right. Yeah, and you and you work around and you shoot from different what they call stations. Right. And you work around and around is 25 targets. Yep. Okay. Now, when we're shooting trap, what do we do? Uh, you stand, at, there's five stations, okay, but they're so, all in one row. Okay, so they're in a row instead of a big circle or a half circle. So they're in a row, and you got a trap house right out in front of you? Yep. And what do the birds do? Uh, you could shoot oscillating doubles or singles, okay. straightaways. Okay. And uh, I like to shoot oscillating because you don't know which direction they're going. I mean, you can kind of figure it out, but there's always something new coming out. Okay, so the oscillating means... That the, the actual the target machine, it's going back and forth like that. And when you call for the bird, wherever that bird is located on the machine or the machine is, that's where it's going to flip out. Right. And it zips out there about 40-some miles an hour, I think. Yeah, the first uh, six feet is a blur. You can't, your can't mind can't register it. it yet. You can't even see it yet. Yeah. So, and you're, how far behind the trap house? Uh, I think you're... The, sta the standard it should be 16 yards. 16 yards. So you're 16 yards from, from the front of the trap house, and that bird comes out of there. And that bird, by the way, is only, what, three and three quarter inches or four and a quarter inches? Yeah. It's a disc, clay disc, and it's zipping out there 40-some miles an hour. Yeah. So that's, that's the American trap. So And then you've got, so the trap house is out here, and you've got these five stations straight behind and then you shoot five, then five, then five, five, and five. So that's around at 25. Yeah. Okay. What, what is, uh, previously before, before you did this latest thing, what was your best uh, score for trap? Uh, I, was, I was getting 22s. Okay. So 22 out of 25. Yeah, which, which isn't that's isn't pretty bad. That's it's... pretty good, I mean, really. And what kind of shotguns are you using in this thing? Uh, all the way from my dad's Mossberg 500 to uh, the the range guns, which is a Beretta semi-automatic 12 gauge. That's a that's a high dollar gun. Yeah, it is. It's it's a really nice gun, and uh, I was using a, a Wingmaster with a full choke. 870 Wingmaster. That's a Remington. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I was at the practice this last time. And I got to shoot a friend of mine, his uh, Silver Reserve. Which is a Mossberg over and under. Right. Okay. Now, what kind of what kind of shells do you typically shoot when you're shooting trap? Um, they're, uh, they're NSC, I think they are. And uh, it's shooting trap, I think, I think we use eight shot. Okay, seven and a half for eight shot. Yeah. Right. And... Uh, how many, how, what's the load, an ounce, ounce and an eighth, ounce and a quarter? Uh, I think it's ounce and an eighth. Okay. So you're shooting an ounce and an eighth, the number seven and a half, number eight shot. 
and you're you're shooting typically out of a out of a full full or modified choke gun, and you're you're shooting at these birds that are zipping out there pretty far, pretty fast. Right. Okay. And prior to the, the other practice, your last practice, you had your best had been like 22. Yeah. Who are some of the guys that, that are on your team out there? I know you shoot with some pretty good shooters out there. Yeah, like Jack Cavender. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a trap phenom. Yeah, uh, Wyatt Majors, a girl named Sarah, out there. She just started. Yeah, and right? she's doing really. And she's really doing well. really really well. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine, his name is Daniel Wright. Okay. And uh, there's a couple others, but I I don't really shoot with them. I only shoot with a certain squad. Okay. All the time. So and, and and like you say, the the whole idea when you guys are out there practicing is you're getting ready. To go to a to a state shoot, and then those that do really really well can qualify to go to the nationals. Right. Right. So, and this is your first year with this group. Uh, well, back in two thousand nine, I shot for Steve Bell's group. Oh, okay. So, but but this but, is yeah the these pe these people in this group. Yeah, this is kind of your your first year with this with this new group. Right. So, so you go out there to shoot, and you go out and you shoot your you're going to use this the, the club Beretta, I think, and uh, what did you do? Well, back at the ATA, I shot my friend's 870 Wingmaster uh -huh. with a full choke, and I did really well. Okay. So I asked Steve if I could use the Beretta and put the full choke in it, maybe do just as well at practice uh -huh. and keep steady on my, my average right. scores. Right. And I went out there and ended up shooting a 12. A 12. A 12. And Is that probably not the worst you'd ever shot? That's probably the worst I've ever shot. Okay. So you only got 12 birds out of 25. Right. So what happened? Well, I was a little, I was really, really discouraged with myself, disgusted, and I shouldn't be shooting like that ever. And so I was talking to Jack Cavender about it, and he put it to me as stop whining and here, use my gun. This is the over and under Mossberg Silver Reserve. Right. Okay. And he handed me this gun, and this thing is beautiful. And out to the trap range you go. Yep. He goes, all right, let's go. You're going to go with me, and we're going to go shoot. I said, okay. So what would you get? So I go out there, and I shoot a 23. 23 out of 25. Yeah. Right. So you go from a 12 to a 23 just by changing guns. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so he, he, t he told me to uh, keep shooting the, the top barrel. And I wasn't sure what the top barrel was. So after that, I asked him what was, what choke was in the top barrel that was so special. And he said, it's improved modified. I said, well, that makes sense. Okay. So now you're going to go shoot another one. Right. Another round. Yep. And what do you do? And uh, five, I keep going. He keeps calling out scores. Five, five, five. And I shot my first 25. Your first perfect round. Right. Okay. So then what'd you do? And so everyone asked me if I could part with this hat that I have on. And and I said, yes, I'd, lo I'd love to shoot it. So we all stood up, went out there, and he threw it, and everyone shot it. So it's a tradition when you get your first 25, the hat you're wearing that day, they throw it up in the air and your squad shoots it right. full of holes. Yep. So you got this hat on here, it's got full of holes because yeah, you shot it perfect. Yep. So, but, but you're not done. No, I, I, I was told that the tradition is you try to go out and get your straight 50. Okay. And I felt pretty confident. Okay. So what happens? So I, I go out there and we're shooting and boom, 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 hitting everyone. I get to the last station and on my, my last target, my 50th target. That you, you've broke 49 straight. Yeah. And I pulled and when I said pull, the machine lagged, which I should have still been on it. Went out there, I, I rushed myself, and I missed. You missed the last target. I missed the last target. Or otherwise you'd have had 50 straight. Yeah. Wow. It's, ju it's just as bad as getting 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did real fine. Congratulations. Thanks, Don. Hey, folks, that's all we have time for today. How about that? 49 out of 50 after his first round of shooting 12. So proving that the gun can matter. I want to thank Ryan for being here today. He's a good kid. I hope he has good luck future shooting shotguns and other, other firearms. 
Until next week, this is your host, Captain Don Martin, saying keep your fishing line fresh, your firearms oiled, and we'll see you next week back at camp.